Welcome to the narrative analysis um, session in the Methods Fair today. Uh, my name's Vanessa May. I'm a lecturer in uh, sociology. Um, and as you might have guessed, one of my interests, uh, research interests is, is narrative analysis. Why would social scientists want to study narratives? Also, looking at definitions of what a narrative is, um, and then looking at how narrative analysis has been conducted within the social sciences. Um, I first want to get a bit of an idea of, of my audience here. So, how many of you already use narrative analysis? Okay, you're clearly in the minority. Two hands, three hands went up. How many of you know something about narrative analysis? A few more hands. How many of you know nothing at all about narrative analysis? Okay. So a varied, varied group here. So like you know, these are kind of taster sessions of, of methods. So what I'm going to do here is kind of talk to you um, quite broadly about narrative analysis. I'm not going to give you a formula of, you know, this is how you can go away and do it. Um, if you want to use narrative analysis in your own research, you're going to have to read more widely. There are many different approaches within narrative analysis, so you'll have to find the one that's appropriate to your research question and to your theoretical framework and your interest more broadly. So this is, for most of you, just an introduction uh, to narrative analysis. So when you want to, someone to know who you are, what, what do you do? Tell them about yourself. You tell them about yourself. Um, and what do, you, what do you usually tell people? Your name. Your name. Where you're from. What you do, things that have happened to you. So this is a particular type of narrative that, that we use very much in our everyday life, and that's the kind of the autobiographical narrative, um, or kind of explaining your kind of identity to someone. And we do so using kind of conventions of and some of the conventions are that, that people need to know your name, where you're from, what you do, and so on. And these, of course, can vary between different cultures. So we, we tell stories when we want someone to know who we are. You're probably guessing the, the answers to the other two questions. So when you experience something, how do you make sense of it? You connect it to the previous experiences you might have had. Exactly, very good, yeah. So you might connect it to what's happened before. So you're, you're kind of creating a continuity. And you might, for example, connect it by, by sort of um, connected it, connecting it causally. So thinking, okay, I've ended up here because of what I did yesterday. So again, when we're trying to make sense of our everyday life and what's happening to us constantly, what we're doing in our own heads is, is, is constructing stories. We're telling narratives. So there's a constant narrative actually going on in our head where we're kind of piecing together today's events, um, how they fit with our kind of general understanding of life. Did something out of the ordinary happen or was this just an ordinary day? Does this fit in with who, you know, I thought of myself? So, for example, if you experience like a sudden break in your life, for example, if someone falls seriously ill, that person often then has to go and reconstruct their, their identity, kind of reconstruct the narrative that they've told of themselves so far in order to make that break fit with that overall coherence. So there's, there's an assumption there that, that these narratives, they give coherence to our experiences. They make them understandable and, um, and kind of make, make them fit in uh, within kind of frameworks of understanding. And then how do you communicate those experiences to other pe people? Bit of an obvious question. Who wants to give the obvious answer? You tell them about it. You tell them about it. So as you can see, narratives are a very fundamental part of our lives. So they're fundamental to us understanding who we are, fundamental to making sense of the world around us, and also fundamental to us communicating with each other. So we need narratives as human beings. We need narratives because we, we are narrative beings, uh, goes the argument. <coughs> 
So if narratives are so fundamental to who we are, it then makes sense for social scientists to sort of analyze how we as people use those narratives. So narrative analysis, as, as you'll come to realize through the talk, it's quite a broad field. So I can't sort of say that, that um, what I'm saying here covers every single narrative analyst in the world. But here are some of the characteristics of narrative analysis. And it's that we're interested in how people create meaning um, through narratives, through the narratives that they tell. So we can be interested in how they create meaning in terms of who they are, so looking at their narrative identity. But we can also be interested in, say, how organizations make, make sense of uh, the world. So we could look at, for example, policy documents and see how policy documents are telling us a story about the world. It's made, that policy document is trying to make the world legible to us. It's trying to put a point across as to how the world works, possibly what's wrong with it and what should be done to fix that problem. So we make sense of the world in a very fundamental way. We make sense of the world through the stories that we tell. So language here is a very fundamental part of, of human life. Because without language, we, wouldn't, we, we use language to give names to, to objects. But also we use language to categorize put people or events. And we then make we use language to sort of create these narratives about how things are linked to, to each other, how they make sense as a whole. And as we've already covered, these narratives are one of the main ways of communicating. So most social scientists, I would say, are working with some form of narrative. And that narrative might be, it might be verbal, so it might be in terms of text of what people are saying. Um, that narrative can also be physical, so um, there are people within narrative analysis who are interested in, for example, dance performances and the narratives that they tell. Um, or the narrative, it can be numerical as well, so numbers tell stories as well. And we interpret those numbers in, in particular ways. So we're telling stories about the world either through words or through our body, body or uh, through numbers. So narratives, when we start to look at it this way, narratives are everywhere. You can't get away from narratives. So then it sort of makes sense that, well, yes, as social scientists, we need to examine those narratives. We need to examine how people use them um, and what kind of impact those narratives have. So again, as social scientists, we're interested in, for example, how narratives are linked in with structures of power, for example. So who gets to tell the narrative of a nation, for example? Who gets to tell the narrative of a historical event? Now, as you know, these are, these are kind of, um, these are issues that, that come under sort of a lot of um, uh, argument and negotiation uh, over, you know, who gets, who gets to tell how things are in this world. So for example, for a long time, um, the history of Britain was a very white history. Um, and it's only recently uh, that, that, that the kind of the white history um, has kind of uh, changed to encompass also the stories of, of migrants into this country, for example. So it's important. So narratives are important. They aren't just stories. Narratives are ways of making sense of the world and thereby by categorizing the world and they are because they are linked to these structures of power so for example some professions might have more power to sort of um, define for example the history of a nation uh, or or the the hierarchy within a nation so narratives matter it matters how we tell stories about the world and who tells them and in what way